Hey, everybody, we're back here with the subject of the new documentary, Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields. What is it like for you to see your life presented documentary style, to, to look back? It's emotional, actually. I'm sure. It really is because you see this little girl and she's, she's trying so hard and she's poised and there's so many heartbreaking moments in it of this 12 year old who's under the under attack and I'm doing everything I can to protect my mother and and you just see like and then you start seeing I have the squeaky voice and then you start seeing you know hearing the voice changing and you start seeing me sort of zone out and I just sort of was shutting out because journalists were so un unkind, rude to me, you know, asking me for my measurements, only wanting to talk, talking and talking to a child the way you really shouldn't be talking to a child. And they were doing the very thing that they were accusing the film, Pretty Baby was my first film, mm. that they were doing, accusing the, the film of doing. In their sort of quote-unquote investigation of the sexualization of children, they were engaging the sexualization themselves. Absolutely. And, and like, talking about how gorgeous I am. And it was like this lascivious sort of thing. And, and are you, you know, virgin and like all this stuff. And you'd think it was just so, it was so hypocritical to me mm -hmm. that it, you know, it really, it just unsettled me. But watching the film itself, I've never seen my whole life played out. And I'm so proud of my work. You know, my work has never been. <laughs> It's all my family. <laughs> um, I, I was always pretty or famous or infamous or there was, you know, tall or eyebrows or whatever it was. And nothing was ever really discussed about what I was working so hard for and loved more than anything. And then to watch it all in a row and realize that I really did survive it and I fought for it and I have a healthy life. I'm so proud of that little girl how she was able to just forge ahead and grow into a healthy person. The, the thing about early trauma, I, I, I found, the thing about, I'm wondering how you, I wonder how you feel about this idea, is that the idea is when you look back on early trauma, and while this was a success, there was traumatic aspects of to it, clearly for you, is that that little girl, is the, that person you'd love to go back in time to help, is really still connected to you. There's an unbroken line of experiences. She's still in there someplace. Absolutely. What would you want to say to her? What, what do you think she would want from you as an adult, I, now that you know who she was? That I was absolutely enough as I was, and that I didn't have to try so hard to save everybody else. And, you know, that I didn't, there were responsibilities I didn't have to, to take on. Um, like, like being what? a child of an alcoholic for, for one taking thing. Taking care of your mother. Taking care, keeping her alive. Mm -hmm. That was, and as a child of an alcoholic, you really very early on learn. You read the room, you read the person's feelings. You're so intimately connected to, especially, she was a single mom. Mm -hmm. I had a very good, great, great relationship with my dad and with his family, but my, my primary focus was my mother. Did you have any other children around you during all this, or were you alone? So the most incredible thing, which nobody really knows, and, and it didn't make it into the documentary, but I was having a phone call the other day with my lawyer, the, the lawyer at the time, and he said, you do realize your mother was a revolutionary when it came to you. And I said, how's that? He said, in the era, they gave us two tickets to fly wherever we were gonna go. She would said, okay, we'll take three. And they would say, well, why? why? We don't, you don't have another child, I don't get it. And she said, we'll have three tickets, please, because she needs a little person her age around with her all the time. And that's what she did. Mm -hmm. We never moved out of the city. We stayed in the city. I went to regular schools, high school, grammar school, college. And then everywhere I went, it was either my stepsister, who was my age, or my friend. And so we could look out at the ridiculousness of adults and the... the the, the idiocy of it, you know, it was just a frenzy. It was crazy and be like, look at the hair on that one, you know, and we Do you ever giggle. look at young stars now and go, I know how they're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they are. 
Because if they've got somebody to, to bounce stuff off of, they're mm -hmm. being allowed to still be little kids. You know, she never wanted me to, to be without someone my own age. And that, you know, that was really, those were the things that, that she did that wasn't salacious. You know, she, mm -hmm. nobody, the people weren't interested in that. Well, Brooke, it was lovely to meet you. Thank you. It is a fantastic documentary, Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, premieres Monday on Hulu. And it's Brooke Shields, everybody. We'll be right back with author Clint Smith.